space is really excellent. So the day that we can start releasing them into the bush again will be even better. Because of the impossibility of captive mothers teaching their cubs to hunt, breeding age females in permanent captivity are put on the pill. Cats likely to come on heat must first be tranquilized, and bribing a cheetah to stay still requires a lot more luck than skill. Wait. And even though these cats are used to a human presence, Lisa cannot avoid a close encounter. So it's back to Mark, the vet, once more, but this time with much less stress. Each female receives a contraceptive implant, active for a year. Believed to be the first time this type of contraceptive has been used with captive cheetahs anywhere in the world, since it was pioneered at Okonjima in 1995, it's been a resounding success. Hunting in Namibia is quite a big thing. Most of the cattle farming areas, uh, most of the cattle farmers do have hunting on their farms as a supplementary income. In Namibia, it's a way of life. The big problem is that some of these cats are worth quite a lot of money and they're very, very difficult to find in the felt. So they will take unethical steps that if they've caught a cheetah or a leopard, they will keep it in a box trap until that hunter is ready to shoot that animal. And I've heard there's no hard evidence of certain people um, but I've heard the odd story on my ways around the farm. One is of a leopard that was caught, kept for seven months in a box trap. And eventually the farmer just shot it himself because nobody wanted to kill it. I've actually been to a farm to pick up a leopard where the guy told me that he was offered 6,000 Deutschmark for that particular cat to shoot it in the trap. So you can imagine that the ethical hunters are very anti the unethical hunters because the unethical guys is giving the whole industry a bad name. I am not completely anti-hunting. I can understand the industry in that killing something to make money in order to ensure the survival of the rest of that species. If anything's worth something, then there's a future for it on this earth. Unfortunately, it's unfair, but that's the way life is. So the industry is understandable, but the people who enjoy killing animals, I don't understand that at all. After we had the meeting on a farmer's day, where quite a couple of farmers listened to Africa Foundation, we started listening, although the other guys start laughing at me because <laughs> we killed them to get rid of a problem. We all of a sudden decided we'll take, uh, we'll give the animals a chance and have a look how that works here. They explained to us about the electric fencing I think that electric fencing is the only effective way that farmers can keep predators away from whatever stock they are farming. The electric fence is energized by a pulsator that pushes out about 10,000 volts. Now this is the energizer that we are getting the farmers to use and add to the existing fences. It's completely solar powered and this is going to save him all the necessary generators, charging batteries, using a fuel. If it wasn't for, for Africa Foundation and Wayne who helped us to erect the electric fence, we wouldn't have done it because of the fact that the, the, the cost involved sounds to you like a lot of money and you rather buy small game or game for it instead. But after we fitted it electrical, it worked much easier easier and better. The increase in animal numbers in a year is 100%. What I envisage for the future is 
a big scale foundation operating not only in Namibia as we come up with uh, practical solutions for this problem and because we're actually farmers at heart ourselves we know the practical side of it it's very easy for somebody to understand uh, the saving of cats that live in a city or that only see these beautiful animals on holiday but it's a complete different story operating with the very person that has lost possibly a half a million dollars over the last 20 30 years due to uh, predators it's going to call for some real down-to-earth solutions that is going to work for the farmer and indirectly it will then work for the cats as well because all over the world where you have domestic animal farming sooner or later predators in that area move out or they are shot out or they move out because of loss of habitat could we actually take a country like Namibia and turn it around to be a haven for cheetah and leopard for instance and at the same time have farmers with these animals roaming on their property and have no problems with them at all After three years of drought in Namibia, it finally rains. And like the toads who have lain dormant in the mud all this time, everything comes to life. For a short while, the monotone of dust and dry grass of the veldt is replaced with a burst of unfamiliar colour, echoed by a feeling of optimism over the increasing success of Okanjima and Afrikat. Three cheetahs are very special to Lisa. They are the first three animals she rescued as orphaned cubs, and the reason why she finally decided to dedicate her life to cheetah conservation. To me, they're something that you can get close to. It's almost like a dog in that way. A lot of people say they're house cat, you can never get close to your house cat or a cat, which is what the other cats are, lion, leopard, and, and the house cat and African wild cats. But a cheetah is more like a dog. It's like a trusting friend. So to me, they've got far more feelings than the other cats. So it's something that you can get close to. They can be a friend to you. To tell you the honest truth, I don't honestly think the cheetah will go extinct. I do think it's very likely, but I wouldn't say it will happen, but it's very likely that the cheetah numbers will go down further. They've never ever had a time in their lives when they've been ha having a carefree time. They've always been killed by lions, they've always been killed by hyenas, their prey has always been stolen. Now it's a case of livestock farmers, but there are no other predators on the farmlands to counteract the number of cheetahs that are actually being bred because they breed pretty easily and they have a lot of cubs. So there are a lot of people that do believe that if farmers didn't remove cheetahs, there would be a big problem. In other words, there'd be too many cheetahs. I believe that they overdo it a bit, but I still don't believe that they will go extinct. But I think that a lot of the catching, there's a lot of cruelty involved, and to me that is where education will come and help. If you can educate the farmer's kids, there's a possibility of coming up with more solutions. During this unusual summertime, Bobby Bowser, farmer and former cheetah killer, pledges his support to Lisa and her cause. Hi, Lisa. How are you? How fun, you? I brought you something. Oh, excellent. Oh, wow. That's excellent. Thanks. I will say this, that the cheetah population of Namibia is the biggest population in the world. And if we as uh, farmers don't look after these animals, may it only be for f uh, photographs or what, in the next 20 years, you won't have cheetah anymore. And they, as cheetah, haven't got a chance if we don't give them a chance. We've got modern weapons and modern ways and technologies to get rid of them. But once they are gone, our grand-grandchildren will most probably tell, uh, tell each other that were our parents, they didn't think of it, of saving these animals. The change of heart actually 
came through that one knows that they are an endangered species. Somebody has to look after them, giving them a second chance to survive. As a final seal on his promise towards the conservation of cheetahs in the future, Bobby accompanies Lisa for the release of a cheetah near his farm. One more hardened farmer proves he can change. Lisa takes another step closer to her dream of freedom and safety for cheetahs in Namibia. And one more spotted cat runs free.